Hello to everyone and uh, now in this video we will be discussing on the topic of viral pericarditis and this is in uh, pericarditis the meaning of pericarditis is an inflammation of the pericardium that is the serous lining of the heart that is the outer covering of the heart okay so pericarditis uh, viral pericarditis so viral pericarditis meaning is that it is caused by viral infections so if the patient is suffering from any type of respiratory viral infection so after two or three weeks the patient has chances of development of pericarditis and that uh, pericarditis is called as viral pericarditis the causes can be infectious that is uh, tuberculosis most commonly and non infectious also now uh, if, uh, if we see the function of the pericardium so pericardium is to pre function of pericardium is to prevent the sudden expansion of the heart chambers during the exercise especially the right and left atrium or when the blood volume increases in the heart chambers and also prevents infection from the lung also prevents uh, infection from the lungs and pleural cavities to the heart so pericardium actually protects the heart from the further or nearby a organ suffering from infections to enter the heart so it also acts as covering or protective layer of the heart now classification if we see we have infectious uh, in infectious as i told you there can be viral the most commonly then comes your bacterial also and other also so that can be fungal also parasitical also so that are not so common as compared to viral and bacterial now we uh, according to duration uh, we have acute uh, type of viral uh, pericarditis sub acute pericarditis and recurrent most common is we see is acute type so uh, now viral pericarditis is often detected in the young people so it are most common uh, in the young people and associated with the pleural effusion so pleural effusion is the most common sign you will see in the patient with pericarditis or viral pericarditis and inflammatory pathology of the lungs you can also see here now viruses like respiratory viruses as i told you can be the more um, commonly seen uh, the patient suffering from respiratory viral infections as viral pericarditis is preceded by respiratory tract infections and the most common viruses are like coxsackie virus a and b type influenza virus mumps virus herpes herpes simplex virus chicken pox can also as well as eco virus so these are the most common viral uh, infections uh, the patients uh, who are suffering from these diseases firstly and after 3 to 4 weeks they have the chances of uh, development of viral pericarditis as a complication so okay now how does pericarditis develop now inflammation of pericardium through direct cell destruction or toxic so inflammation of pericardium occurs due to direct any cell destruction that can be like cytolytic effect or toxic effect to the pericardium and also microorganism can pro uh, provoke the autoimmune response of the body and uh, which uh, in which the immune system can itself destroy the, its own tissue so there can be two types of uh, the cause of development of pericarditis now symptoms of the patient can be like chest pain first of all you will see the patient comes with your chest pain and the pain can also radiate to the neck arm region and left shoulder region okay and the symptoms appears 10 to 12 days after the viral infection as i told you and fever is also the most common sign in this patients now rubbing noise of pericardium uh, we will see an on exhalation we will see the rubbing noise of the pericardium during exhalation this is the most common physical examination you can see uh, in the patient with per pericarditis and 85% patients of acute pericarditis uh, seen in 85% of uh, acute pericarditis patient and shortness of breath and heart rhythm disorders now you can see in this image uh, this is the image of the pericarditis patient and as you can see the twin layers of pericardial sac become inflated causing the chest pain and causes i told you these are unclear but doctor either uh, either are unable to determine the cause or can say it is a viral infection now symptom as i told you chest pain shortness of breath fever now you can see the heart section is taken and these are the layers of the heart like the uh, parietal and the visceral layer we have in the pericardium so in that we have pericardial fluid filled uh, filled with fluid and you can see the inflated part the pericarditis you can see this red part here and this area yellow one is your uh, actually your fluid which is filled between your parietal and the visceral layer visceral will be inside parietal will be outside and between that this yellow is the fluid here but when there is inflammation to any of the layer of the parietal or visceral you can see this red part here this is actually your inflammation in the 
pericardium so this is the main uh, you will see in the uh, outer layer of the heart this pericarditis clear now uh, if we see the uh, if we see the complication we have uh, one complication that is the cardiac tamponade and conservative uh, constructive pericarditis not conservative constructive constructive pericarditis and recurrent pericarditis is most often seen in the patients now if we see the diagnosis we will go for the lab test to check the viral infection viral test antiviral test uh, not the, that is viral test we can see ecg will see in ecg we can see st segment and abnormal t waves eco kg when we can do and the most common or confirmatory diagnosis we can do is cardiac mri used as a confirmatory diagnosis clear now firstly we will do the lab test to confirm the presence of the virus and then we will see the characteristics pain pericardial friction noise will be seen and characteristics ecg changes as i told you we will see an appearance of pericardial effusion so pericardial effusion we will see the chest x ray so you can see in the patients with the chest x ray here oh okay so this is a patient suffering from pericarditis so it his heart or his or heart her heart will look like this so these are the enlarged side of your right ventricles and this is are your right atrium so these are enlarged you can see so this is actually the cardiomegaly you will see increase in the cardiac thoracic ratio so these are all the radiological uh, signs or uh, signs which we calculation we do to check the megalies cardiomegalies so simple meaning is the, the heart size will be increased simple meaning now this is also the patient suffering from this you can see pericardial effusion here uh, pleural effusion we can also see uh, fluid in the lungs we can see in the chest x ray and this is your uh, constructive pericarditis you can say this is example of constructive pericarditis now here in this diagram you can see uh, one more exam uh, one more uh, picture for you so this is the outer layer you can see parietal and visceral this blue part is your pericardial fluid here blue color is showing and this is a zoom part you can see this blue part now this is a normal this normal labeling normal pericardium fibrous outside then comes your visceral inside parietal outside this red one and between parietal and visceral we have pericardial cavity in which we have pericardial fluid okay so in which we have pericardial fluid this blue one and if there any inflammation occurs you can see this 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 one uh, this inflamed inflamed visceral layer pericarditis excess caused by the excess fluid in the pericardial cavity following an inflammation so this excess fluid inside this uh, pericardial cavity can lead to the inflammation of the layers of the pericardium okay so these are the uh, cause which will lead to the pericarditis so these are the images you can see here clear so this was the pericarditis now treatment of the diseases we can go with the nsaids that is non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs with gradual dose reduction over 2 to 4 weeks okay and colicin is a recommended to reduce the risk of recurrent pericarditis so this drug is actually given to reduce the risk of development of pericarditis again to the patient and antiviral therapy we can give as the patient has a viral infection or this can be viral pericarditis so we can prescribe antiviral drugs now removal of excess pericardial fluid we can uh, do this can be done by any suction or any surgery or yeah, there can be any medicines which can reduce the fluid in the lungs or in the pericardium okay in chronic constructive pericarditis radial uh, pericardectomy is required in the chronic case if the patient is suffering from acute case acute means for the uh, very less duration so we can recommend this medicines for the patients but if the patient has gone in the chronic state that is uh, 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 the patient is suffering from 1 to 2 years suffering from pericarditis and uh, he is not able to recover so in that case we go for the surgical treatment which is called as radial pericardectomy the removal of the pericardium layer okay so this is our the treatments here now prognosis of viral pericarditis is good prognosis because acute pericarditis is most commonly seen and most of the patients usually recover from the viral pericarditis okay and after treatment patient returns to its usual life okay normal life so that is the main uh, prognosis for the viral pericarditis thank you